Vigor is an Xbox One exclusive third person survival looter shooter. It just graduated from game preview and with that became free to play for anyone with an Xbox Live Gold account. So there's sure to be lots of new players trying out the game for the first time, and those players will need some help and guidance when getting started. This video is meant to help those new players get a feel for the game with some basic tips to help you survive and thrive in Vigor. Depending on what types of games you're used to playing, you might find yourself confused when trying to figure out what's best to do and when. After this video, you should have a basic understanding of all the game's mechanics and get some best practices to become a more successful Outlander. Some of these tips may be obvious to those of you that have been playing the game for quite a while now, but they still should serve as a decent reminder of what to do in certain situations, and who knows, maybe you'll learn something too. Before we get started though, I'd like to tell you how you can win a code for a starter pack in Vigor. This pack is valued at $10 and includes 5 outfits for your character, as well as 500 crowns which is the end game currency. If you'd like to win one of these packs, simply write a comment below and I'll give a few of these codes out at random. Good luck! Number 1. Get familiar with your shelter. First and foremost, find out all the things that you can do at your shelter. Since a big portion of the game will be spent in your shelter, you should know everything about it. Your shelter has a number of places you interact with where you can get to the menu system. You need to access one of these places to queue up for an encounter, craft ammo, weapons, or consumables, customize your character, upgrade your shelter, open crates, or purchase items at the store. You can switch between the different tabs using the LB and RB buttons, and each one of these places in your shelter goes to a specific tab on the menu system but you can go to any of them to access any tab. Once you upgrade your shelter, it will begin generating crafting materials for you. They only can generate so much, so it's important to log in every day to empty them out and collect the materials. So the more you upgrade your shelter, the more it's going to help you out. Now without a doubt, one of the most important things at your shelter is the shooting range. The recoil and vigor is hard to control, and it's a lot to get used to, especially with the different guns that you have to use. Each one of them feels unique and different, so it's very important to go out to the shooting range Practice shooting the targets, try some of the challenges, and just make sure that you're ready in case you need to defend yourself. The scarecrows in the shooting range actually have the same amount of health as an enemy outlander, so that provides you with a good way to test out the weapon, see which one does the most damage, and which one is best to take out into the wild. Number 2. Only take whatever you're okay with losing into an encounter. This tip has held true through the early stages of the game up to now with the full release. Only take what you're okay with losing. Unless you're just going for it and going for a high kill game, be conservative. I like to compare it to going to a casino. If you bring too much money, you may end up losing more than you can afford. Taking your best items into an encounter does increase the tension in each match, but when you're starting out, the risk of taking too much may be too high for you. Usually I'm only taking a weapon that I can craft. Unless I'm really confident and want to use the new weapon that I found and press my luck, I mainly stay conservative. Vigor is filled with all types of tough decisions to make. A lot of players go into a match only carrying a knife or even no weapon at all, avoid confrontation and just try and loot up. If you go into a match with nothing, you really have nothing to lose. Some might call that playstyle too passive, but it's not a bad way to get some decent loot with very low risk. Number 3. Learn what type of loot to expect from containers. There are a lot of different crafting materials to collect when playing Vigor. You'll need all of these to upgrade your shelter and get it to the max level. Doing that will allow your shelter to generate more materials and food for you to use, so it's important when you're out in an encounter to know what you're looking for. Usually it's a safe bet to just loot whatever you see, but if you have to be quick and can only grab a few things or if your bag's filling up, knowing what containers hold what loot can be important. Some containers always have wires, some always have nails, some always have metal parts. If you want to find gas or electronics, loot lots of vehicles. If you want to find chemicals and fertilizer, your best bet is probably looting cabinets and buildings. Garages will have lots of wires, nails, and metal parts, and so on. The loot and vigor makes sense. You shouldn't expect to find gas in a refrigerator, and you won't find nails in an ammo box. After you play the game for a while, you'll start learning what to expect. Number 4. Remember to collect the resources at your base. Once you've upgraded your base so that it starts generating materials for you, you'll have certain places around your shelter that you'll need to go to to collect them. These fill up in real time, so if you don't play the game for about 24 hours, you should have a pretty full set of generated materials and parts to collect around your shelter. But if you don't collect them and they fill up, you'll no longer gain those resources. In order to make sure your base is helping you out the best that it can, empty these out regularly. Extra parts and materials can only help. Number 5. Deconstruct items you don't need. If you have 10 Lugers and a ton of ammo for it, but you never use it, you might as well deconstruct them for materials. Materials you can then use to craft weapons and ammo that you will use. 
Number six, don't be afraid to run. If you know you're outgunned or if you're losing the fight, there's no shame in running. The only thing that actually matters and vigor is surviving, especially in the early stages of your time with the game. If you've been playing for a while and have a huge stockpile of guns and materials, maybe it's not a big deal if you die. But for a beginner, every bit of loot is precious. Don't be afraid to run away from an encounter or hide in a bush. It's awfully effective. With any luck, you'll be able to escape the encounter successfully and bring back everything in your inventory. Number seven, craft weapons with weapon parts or unlock a plan in a crate. Once you've gathered enough individual weapon parts for a particular weapon, you can craft that weapon at your workbench. This won't cost materials and it will be created instantly. Keep in mind that you need to upgrade your shelter in order to craft higher tier weapons, but the standard weapons you start out with will be available to craft in the early stages. If you don't have enough parts, you can craft a weapon you have unlocked a plan for. Plans can be found in crates, so make sure that you go for the airdrop if you want to gather more plans to craft. Crafting with a plan will cost a designated amount of materials, so be sure you have enough. Number eight, make sure to bring ammo. Not only that, but make sure it's the right ammo. There have been times where I've gone into an encounter with a weapon. I go to fire my gun, and there's no ammo. I forgot it. So what do you do next? See tip six. For real though, it seems like a simple thing to remember, but I'm sure everyone's done it. You can decide just how much ammo you want to bring into a match, but I like to bring 60 to 90 rounds. Others bring more, but they probably go in looking for trouble more than I do. Number nine, crouch when shooting in third person. The recoil and vigor is very difficult to control. If you crouch when you're firing, the recoil will be much more manageable. I like to shoot in third person in vigor, and crouching when firing helps a ton. Make sure to hit up the shooting range as often as you can to test out all your weapons and get comfortable with them so that you're prepared if you have to fight in an encounter. Number 10. Close doors. Doors can make noise when they're opened. If you're in a building and you have the doors closed, if someone decides to come in you should be able to hear them. This will give you the advantage right away and hopefully increase your odds of survival. You can also close doors as a way to trick players into thinking nobody has been through the area. The more you can remain hidden, the better chance you'll have of getting the jump on your enemy. I try to close doors as much as possible to keep my opponents guessing. Number 11. Pay attention to the direction of the wind. If you pull up your map, you can easily see if the radiation will hit you first or if you'll have extra time to loot while in an encounter. The direction of the wind is important to take note of, just in case you want to stick around and loot some more before exiting the map. Look for the red arrows on the map in one of the corners to see which way the radiation will come from. This is definitely vital information to know before you leave the encounter. Number 12, only shoot if you think you can get the kill. When hidden, one surefire way to get shot at is to miss your shot. If you shoot at someone far away and don't kill them, they're instantly alerted and aware of your position. This will allow them to get into cover and possibly flank you, and it also alerts everyone around the area of your position. Just make sure you're only shooting at players you have a chance at killing, otherwise you expose yourself to unnecessary danger. Number 13. Empty your inventory before the next encounter. If you had a successful encounter where you found multiple weapons, healing, and ammo, you'll want to visit your bench before queuing up for another one. Your inventory doesn't automatically empty itself, so you'll need to make sure that you know exactly what you're risking before heading off for another match. You also might need to stock up on more ammo if you used it in the previous match, so just always be mindful of what's in your inventory. Number 14. Share loot with your teammate. If you're playing in duos mode, either with someone you know or a random partner, don't be the jerk that sucks up all the loot like a vacuum. Share with your teammate and maybe they'll share with you. It's important to work together as a team to survive so building a good relationship with loot will only help your cause. Duos mode is a lot of fun so I definitely recommend giving it a try. Just be mindful that if you're rude, your partner just may shoot you in the back. Number 15. Don't be afraid to leave and queue up again. There's no reason to stick around in an encounter too long if you have what you need to upgrade your shelter. You can always leave, survive, and then go back out into an all new match. The only reason to stick around for a long time is if you're waiting for the drop or if you still need more loot. But if you're satisfied, there's no shame in getting out while you still can. And finally, last but not least, number 16, run into the radiation. Wait, what? That doesn't make sense, right? Or does it? Think about it. If you have a ton of loot and you're scared to lose it, maybe take an unconventional path out of the map. Go into the radiation even to purposely avoid players. Just be careful though because you can definitely die to the radiation if you're in it for too long. I found this out the hard way and that was a pretty sad moment. I went to exit the map, I had two seconds left, and my character died and I lost everything. However, using the radiation to your advantage can help you leave the encounter with all the precious loot you worked so hard for. That's probably your best bet to avoid campers at the exit. So those were some tips for players just getting into the flow of things on Vigor. 
I hope they were helpful and that you learned something, and even if you're a veteran player, maybe some of these tips reminded you of things that you've forgotten. If you found the video useful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to stay up to date on everything that I publish. Remember that I'm doing a giveaway on this video, so if you'd like a chance to win, simply enter a comment below and I'll pick a few lucky winners to receive a starter pack for Vigor. If you have any other questions for me, definitely let me know in the comments. I'll try and answer as many as possible, but hopefully this was a good base to start with if you're just getting into the game. You can follow me on Twitter at YTBoris15. I also do giveaways there, so make sure to follow me if you do have a Twitter account. And you can actually get a free bag in the game with my logo on it. If you want that, I have a link in the description. Check it out. But with all that being said, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Until next time, I'll see you later.